Hey everybody, welcome to the Tattooed Chap. I thought I'd do something a little bit different today. I'm sitting in my truck. I'm not gonna be in the studio or any of that kind of stuff, but someone sent me uh, several questions via Instagram, and I thought they're good questions that probably a lot of people have. And so I thought I'd answer them kind of rapid fire for all of you today in this video. Before I jump to those, make sure to like and share this and subscribe and all that cool stuff. So let's jump to the questions. So I'll read them out loud and then I'll give you the answer, the closest thing to an answer that I can come up with. So the first question is, what is your favorite part about being a chaplain? My favorite part of being a chaplain is just being there with soldiers and loving them in their hard times, but also being there with them in their good times. The military oftentimes can be like a machine, right? And we're all cogs in it. and the chaplain's like that one person that doesn't view other people as part of that machine or a cog in that machine, but getting to see them as real people and loving them as a person, someone that's made in the image of God, that I think is one of my favorite things about being a chaplain. There's a lot of other cool things, but I think that is the highlight of my day when I can connect with someone on that level because I can see that it makes a difference. So number two, what does my typical week look like as a chaplain? I just did a video on that. Uh, I put a link right above this right here so you can see what that looks like. But that's what the average week looks like. It changes quite a bit uh, depending on what your mission set is and if you're prepping to go to the field. It really comes down to what are you planning? Are you in the midst of training? Are you ready for some kind of mission? So on and so forth. That can really vary quite a bit. So number three, what has been your favorite duty station? My favorite duty station was the Defense Language Institute in Monterey, California, uh, just south of Santa Cruz. Awesome place. You will probably not get stationed there as a chaplain. I got stationed there because my wife is a military linguist and we went there for two years as she learned two languages. And I would say for places that you'd probably get stationed, I really like JBLM, Fort Lewis in Washington. I'm from the area, so I probably don't appreciate it as much as other people do. It's a beautiful place and if you love the outdoors, it is amazing. Where I want to get stationed is Fort Huachuca in Arizona. I have family that lives down there and I love the desert because I love the hot and desert atmospheres. So there's that. Oh, maybe you should know where I've been stationed. I've been stationed at Fort Lewis, Fort Polk, Louisiana, Korea in Seoul at Yongsun and uh, Monterey, California. And I've been to a lot of other places um, like Jackson and Fort Bliss, Fort Sam Houston, Aberdeen Proving Ground. There's probably a couple other ones I've been to for trainings and stuff. And there's some pretty cool ones there too. But yeah, JBLM is probably on the top. I know a lot of people try to get here all of their career. How does being a chaplain affect your wife and kids? I honestly think that being a chaplain um, has a great impact on your family, pros and cons, but I think it kind of depends on how you as a family navigate what chaplaincy is like. Any ministry job can pay a heavy toll on your family if you are not wise in self-care for yourself and for your family. My family, we, uh, my wife knows what it's like to be a soldier because she is one and my kids have grown up in that world, but we really guard our family time and we really invest in our family time. We invest in each other as husband and wife. And so we don't really see negatives coming from it. I have seen soldiers and I'd say chaplains that maybe overwork themselves and it, I've seen it take a toll. So I think really guard that time, know where your limits are and where your family limits are. Family comes first every single time. Oh, and also learning how to navigate the different seasons of the military can be helpful for your family. Kind of like when I was in a church, I knew that pre-Christmas, that whole season's crazy. Pre-Easter, that whole season's crazy. But right after Christmas and right after Easter, we would have a big like family time where we could relax because we got through those seasons in the church. Kind of similar in the military. If you have a big field exercise, so on and so forth, you can plan your family schedule around that. So after the field exercise, really invest in the family. Um, or a mini deployment, you know, reinvest in the family afterwards and beforehand can really help mitigate that season of absence from one another. How does your wife enjoy being a chaplain's wife and how involved is she? 
Are there similarities to civilian ministry as a pastor's wife? Yes and no. There is a slight expectation of your wife being involved. Really, I think it comes down to you just deciding what you want to do and what your wife wants to do. Your wife is not a chaplain. She is not a soldier. So she has as much liberty to be involved as she wants to. My wife, she does not necessarily get as involved as some of the other wives. She is involved with some things like there's there's chaplain spouses, lunches and coffees that she goes to and things of that nature. But she's not necessarily super active involved with that stuff. Occasionally we'll have couples over that will host uh, a meal with them. But that's more of just as friends. My wife is part of a neighborhood book club, but she's just there as a military spouse, not as a chaplain spouse. She doesn't really do a whole lot at chapel. She's just there and attends. So, yeah. So really it's up to you and what your wife wants to do um, in regards to that. Who is my endorser and how does that affect your day-to-day -day activities as a chaplain? My endorser is the Assemblies of God and it doesn't really affect a whole lot uh, what, what it looks like to be a chaplain on a regular basis. I know that my endorser is heavily involved in making sure that we're doing okay as chaplains and reaching out to us. I have to send a quarterly report of you know, like what I've done and things of that nature. My endorser supplies me with curriculum, Bibles, things like that if I request it and want it. Um, I do have a yearly conference that I can go to that I'm required to go to at least once every three years, but I love my endorser. They're really great at um, assisting us and caring for us. Do you know of any chaplains who come from non-denominational backgrounds and who would you recommend for their endorser? So there are several people that I know that come from non-denominational backgrounds and there's organizations out there that can endorse them. I don't know what those are off the top of my head. I'll see if I can find some and I'll put them down in the notes below if I find any. But I know they're out there and I've heard good stories. I just don't know off the top of my head, sorry. Oh, another resource that might be helpful with that would be talking to a chaplain recruiter. I understand that chaplains are organized differently in the Air Force and the Army. Have you heard of any good chaplains having trouble making rank and getting kicked out? Yes and no. I haven't heard of any good chaplains getting kicked out. If you are a good pastor to your, to your soldiers and a good staff officer, you shouldn't have a problem making rank. It's probably the chaplains, uh, and maybe I'll offend some by saying this, but it's probably the chaplains that are either really good at one or the other, but not really good at both that probably have problems making rank. The military is an organization and it's not a religious organization. So sometimes they don't, certain commanders don't value the religious aspect that we bring to the table and they want you to be a staff officer. And if you're not willing to do that, you may have problems when your yearly rating comes. All the chaplains that I know that come to work every day and do their job as both a religious provider and as a staff officer don't really have a problem that I've seen anyways. So anyways, those are just my answers uh, in my own opinions, I guess, and just rapid fire. Anyways, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully th this helped and you know, make sure to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. So put your hand in my